Welcome to Our Hometown, the show where we take an in-depth look at some of the people and organizations that make this area unique. This month, we'll meet with two organizations who offer a lot of entertainment for our area residents. First, we'll speak with Melinda Johnson with the Brunswick County Parks and Rec, who will talk about the department and all that they offer to our county. Then we'll meet with Mary Lou Wong Chong with the Brunswick County Intercultural Festival. She'll tell us what's in store for this year's event. Stay with us for the next half hour as we explore our hometown. My guest today is Melinda Johnson. Melinda is the Marketing and Community Events Coordinator for the Brunswick County Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, Melinda, that's a mouthful. It sure is. <laughs> uh, we welcome you to our show. Thanks for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and um, how, you, how you came to Brunswick County. Well, um, I'm in North Carolina, original. Um, I lived closer to Asheville, um, went to Appalachian State and got my degree in Recreation Management. Um, after graduation, uh, my husband and I moved to um, outside the D.C. area in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. We were up there for about four years when the position opened here for um, the special events coordinator. So we decided to move to the beach, and it's been great. We're and, glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, there are a number of divisions of the Parks and Recreation Department. Tell us about those. We do. We have um, five divisions, including mine, um, which you said was marketing and community events. Uh, we also have a fitness coordinator. We have a 55 and over programs coordinator, special populations coordinator, and a youth and adult athletics division. Wow. There's so much going on with Parks and Rec. I'm, I'm not sure exactly where to start, but, but let's start with the summer events. Even though this is to be aired in August, uh, tell us about the summer events. All right, we've had, we have a bunch of programs going on right now. Um, my division specifically, uh, we partner with communities and schools. We run a summer camp for all the kids, you know, while the kids are out of school. Mm -hmm. um, we have our ever popular Concerts on the Coast, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Um, those are in six locations now throughout the county, Southport, right. Leland, Chalet, Ocean Isle, Sunset Beach, Calabash, you know, they're all over the place. So, and those will run through um, Labor Day weekend. Those are very successful, aren't they? They are very popular. Yeah. Uh, any other divisions that we've... we've yeah, um, our, fitness, our fitness department, they run programs all, all season. Sure. Um, they have yoga and tennis, um, you know, lots of fitness um, classes that run throughout the year. So they're always busy. Um, our athletics division, they stay busy with softball and baseball and running tournaments. So, and we're actually getting ready to start um, cheerleading football. So that'll be here before wow. you know it. So. Yeah. Well, the Parks and Recreation folks uh, are so busy and you're so busy. At the same time, we want our viewer, our viewing audience to, to um, consider that there may be more out there for those that aren't as active as, as some. Uh, tell us about the fall programming as well. Well, this fall, like I said, we have cheerleading and football coming up very okay. quickly. Um, we also have um, our 55 and over department runs some fall programs that are ongoing. They have a co-ed volleyball and a silver paddles, which is um, table tennis, you know, like the Right. And then um, she also has a senior softball team, which is always looking for new members. So Slow and, pitch. I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have to call to find out about that. That's a so. good idea. We'll, we'll ask our viewers to call and find yeah. out. But one of the, um, the more exciting things that she has going, um, we do a half-day fishing adventure that you can um, go out on a chartered boat and fish for the day. Okay. And then she also has a dolphin sightseeing cruise. So if you're not into fishing, you can just get on a boat and go for a, a cruise. So. Now, we spoke before we went on the air about the water fest, but that's different from what you just uh, told us, yes, correct? Yes, uh, that is actually a new event. Um, okay. It's going to be held in Leland at our Brunswick River Park, which is right across from Belleville Elementary. Um, it's, it's a new event. We're partnering with the town of Leland and Leland Parks and Recreation and the tourism department there. And it's going to host a um, stand-up paddleboard race right there in the river, in the Brunswick mm -hmm. River. Yeah. And then we're also having a kayaking fishing tournament. So that's all going to be on September 21st. So it's like I said, it's a new event. And we're very excited about it. So we hope it's a good turnout. Well, again, one of the things we want our viewers to understand is that there's an activity for everyone. Um, 
how many facilities around the county are, do, do we ha have in parks and recreation? We have um, 13 parks throughout okay. the county. Um, there's one basically in each, east, each district of the county. So, you know, we've got a very large county, but you can find a park in your neighborhood. I go by the parks uh, in the evening and I see the lights on and I see dozens of, and sometimes hundreds of people there for softball or baseball games, other activities. Mm -hmm. There are, the, the parks are open all day and there's plenty of activities for anybody to do. A lot of the um, local leagues use it for the softball, baseball games. Of course, there's picnic tables, playgrounds, you know, tennis courts, basketball. So there's tons of activities for, for you to engage in if you go to visit one of our parks. Yeah, uh, we know that our, our county commission funds uh, your department. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a large number of employees, am I right? We do. We have 96 employees total. Um, I think that's 32 of those are full-time and the rest are part-time. So it takes a lot of people to, to keep things happening around here. Right. Maintaining your parks is a challenge and I know that there are improvements at the Town Creek Park uh, to occur this fall. Is that correct? Yes, um, that's very exciting. Town Creek Park is our next park that is going to get basically a complete makeover. Um, the renovation will start this fall. You know, we don't have a, a, a date set just yet, but the park will close and um, that park, as you know it, will cease to exist and a brand new park will come. Oh, we, really? We're getting a new um, community building, um, a new soccer field, a multi-purpose field, um, new playground, mm -hmm. uh, a dog park, and a new pinwheel sports complex for baseball and softball. Wow, yes. that's impressive. Yeah, it will, it will look nothing like it does now. It's going to be a very, very a beautiful park when we get done. Yes. Wow. Uh, we've kind of talked about the seasons. Uh, things don't get particularly quiet in the winter, even though we have some cold weather. Today. Well, that's the good thing around here. I mean, the weather does stay very nice for very yeah. long, so you can be outside and do all kinds of stuff, you know, throughout the winter. Right, right. You serve as an ambassador for the chamber in addition to the various hats you wear, am I right? That's correct. Um, part of my position as marketing and community events coordinator is to stay out in the public and meet people and keep our name kind of at the forefront. So by serving as an ambassador for the Brunswick County Chamber of Commerce, it helps me to meet individual and business owners throughout the county. And um, as well as that, I um, sit on the Juvenile Crime Prevention Committee and uh, have worked with the First Tee. I'm involved with communities okay. and schools, so Good. I mean, there's just a, a ton of stuff that you know. I've got my hands in just a little bit of everything. So, well, you you are uh, telling the story of Brunswick County Parks and Rec uh, very well, and part of that is your being here today, Melinda. We never like to conclude our program without asking you for uh, contact information because I know there are a number out there that would like to be in touch with uh, you and your offices. So tell us more about that. We have several ways you can keep in contact with us. Um, the first and the best is our website. Um, you can visit that. We also are, are on Twitter and Facebook. No so those are very Yeah, those Good. are very popular. Yeah. Um, but coming out in August, mid-August, um, we have a program guide and this is probably your um, best resource for finding out what's happening. They come out, it comes out three times a year. Um, the one that will be coming out in August will cover everything that we're doing in the fall all the way up until um, the 1st of December. So it'll have so. a comprehensive listing of all the programs that are available throughout yes. the county. Yes, and it comes out, um, you can get a copy in the Brunswick Beacon or the Stateport Pilot. So if you get those at, to your house, it'll already be in there. So it'll be your best guide for finding out how to get in touch with us and what's going on in your neighborhood. Great. So. Melinda Johnson, thank you for being with us today. Thank you so we much. Appreciate it. Is 6.30 too early for a get fit workout? 
Are your weeknights too hectic to catch West Brunswick with football? Find yourself missing all your favorite ATMC TV shows? Well, now you don't have to. ATMC TV is airing all their latest shows on demand. Stop, pause, fast forward, or rewind. Watch your shows on your time. Tune to Channel One to see shows like Get Fit, Tea Time, Community Spotlight, and more. Stay connected to beautiful Brunswick County with ATMC TV On Demand, brought to you free by ATMC. My guest today is Mary Lou Wong Chong. Uh, she's a great friend of mine and a great contributor to the community. Uh, Mary Lou, welcome to our show. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, today we're going to talk about the Multicultural Festival, and we'll mention on several occasions here in the next few minutes that it is to occur September 7th. And it's at Brunswick Community College. That's correct. And we're looking for several thousand of our very good friends to come out and see the Multicultural Ex Festival. Exactly. And this is the purpose of this, is to invite and encourage everybody. Absolutely. To, especially the Brunswick County, to be able to come. Well, I've attended a number of them, and you have a terrific crowd. And we're going to talk about some of the events of that day. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us first, how did the festival begin, and how many years, if you know, uh, the festival's been going on. This year will be the 10th year of our celebration. In the beginning, it was for the benefit of just a, a very few group uh -huh. of, of ethnic groups. And five years ago or four years ago, we decided that, well, we would really want to expand this thing. Right. and make it a really, really multicultural event. And so we had started to step by step grow this way and include as many countries that we have here living in Brunswick County. And you've done just that. I note that the theme is bringing the world to Brunswick County. Exactly. And of course we have some flags and a uh, a map of, of our world here, and, and uh, that tell, helps us tell the story of the Multicultural uh, Festival. Uh, in addition, mm -hmm. uh, I understand that one of the purposes is, is to celebrate our diversity. diversity. Exactly. This is a one-day event, which is free, and our purpose is to bring the community together right. to highlight the multiplicity of the different cultures that we have here in Brunswick County and around the area. Our mission is to create and to coordinate a positive learning environment by providing a place for cultural education and artistic expression, sharing our music, uh -huh the arts, our food, history, and doing that, we hope that it will foster understanding, awareness, acceptance, more tolerance, and most importantly, respect for each other and our difference and respect for a different culture. So this is our whole thing that we would like to spread to our whole community. You say that so well and um, so elegantly. Thank you. Um, let's talk about some of the specifics because I noted you have what's called an international pavilion. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that is. The international pavilion includes several display tables that are manned by our residents here who have ethnic, different ethnic backgrounds. We have different exhibits from Asia, the European countries, mm -hmm. the Latin American countries, Africa, Brunswick County, and everybody that does the display are all residents and our volunteers that share their time and their culture to all of us. I know you have a lot of volunteers. Um, one of the terms that I noted in your uh, literature is called the passport to culture. Tell us about that. Passport to culture is 
something that we have thought about last year, and it was quite successful. The idea is we give the little kids or the children that comes through the pavilion a little passport. The okay. passport has about 20 pages because that is how many countries we had last year. And each child with their parents would go and visit and travel to the different countries. Sure. And for example, they travel to Germany and the, the person who's, who's a German born and exhibiting the, her, her culture, the child and the parents would ask about anything that they would like to ask about the country, mm -hmm. the location, the climate. And then after they finish that, the children are stamped, they get a stamp from the country. So they can go again to another country and get more information, learn from, from the, the countries, and then they get stamped. Now, now after they've gone through, through the world, they get a little prize. Okay. Which uh, hopefully would help them uh, you be motivated to, to do the thing. And hopefully, but after they have gotten their passport, that they will ab be able to share it with their family, with their school, or may maybe they could take it as, as, uh, to, to their school and tell their classmates about, wow, how wonderful. There's a world out there, not just Brunswick County. The, the festival is for the young and old alike, but let's, let's stay with the children because I know you have a children's workshop. Mm -hmm. We also have a children's workshop that is conducted by Home Depot. They've done this for several years, and the children are so excited because they get a little project, they get a little kit, and they get a little project, and, they, and you could see some of the kids that are so excited when they finish their, their project. The other thing I wanted to emphasize, too, is this year we have conducted a po poster art contest at, from right. different schools. We're trying also to reach schools. This year, South Brunswick High and Supply Elementary have participated, and we had 14 very wonderful art work that were entered as a, in the contest. And these kids are going to be acknowledged at our center stage, which is another part of the uh, festival. Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about that. And again, you're touching lives both young and old and, uh, and in between. But <laughs> let's talk about the stage as well. The stage. We have different countries represented on sta the stage, and this, they, they, these are performers, artists that would share their art, their dance, their music. And we have a lineup of, of performers. It's a, a high-powered performance, and it, it is a continuous performance from start to the end of the festival. We have the sheriff's office or sheriff's office <laughs> we and have that's their gospel quartet yes right? yes i've uh -huh. heard them and they are wonderful they're excellent they are excellent and this is also being part of the community we're trying to get the community together sure we have the filipino association that would be here we have the uh, cape fear wilmington indian association we have the Polynesian groups that are coming. We have the children's Japanese drummer, and we have Indian performance. These this performers are professionals, and they will be coming from Charlotte or, or, or Raleigh. Great. Now, I'm jumping around on you a little bit, but I, I want to remind our viewers not only is it September 7th, mm -hmm. but give us the hours as well. September the 7th, Saturday from 10 to 4. And we also have a food tasting tent. And I would like to emphasize that this has been a very popular uh, part of the fest 
festival. You know, when it when it comes to food, it doesn't matter where it is. Well, I've it's, been a server at, at the food line yes, and uh, I, uh, several times, and I've really enjoyed that. But tell us more about the food. It's the, from all over the world. Yes, it's, it's from all over all over all over the world, and uh, we are asking the different ethnic restaurants to please donate food to share with our community and the, the restaurants have mm. really been so supportive and we have all sorts of different kinds of food. Last year we had about 20 of different kinds and and our the people that would go through the line they could we just get a little bit of tasting. Sure, the, the, the sample of everything. And by the time you get to the end of the line, your plate is just this full. And that we, was my experience also. <laughs> and yeah. we only ask for a little bit of uh, fee to, to cover our, sure. our, our expenses. Well, there's a contribution for the or a fee for the food, but otherwise the festival is, is free, free of charge. And we want, all, we want all our viewers to know that We'll have thousands of people there that day, and it's just a terrific event. Yes. Now, uh, you can't do this uh, without volunteers. Exactly. So. And I, we have hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that are so generous in sharing their time and their skills. And also, the community has been very helpful in helping us. And the college, of course. And I know the you college. Didn't that. The college and also some of our uh, corporate uh, sponsors, and I would also like to mention the, the all the in-kind sure. uh, contributions that we get from our community. The news, our news, our local newspapers, our the, our Chamber of Commerce, Brunswick Electric, and and the Nation, North Carolina uh, Arts Council. And also, I must say, because I'm sure Jeanette is looking here, that the Brunswick Arts Council is, does a great part of helping bring this all together. That's good to hear. Now, before we went on the air, we were talking about the fact that the cultural festival is about connecting. Mm -hmm. And you told me a, a story of uh, an experience last year that I'd like our viewers to hear about. Yes, this was such a wonderful story. One, one exhibitor had the exhibit of the Brunswick County, the history and the past of Brunswick County, and she had several pictures of her ancestors. And one person that was coming to just look at, at the exhibit said, wow, that picture, that is my great grandfather. Where did you get that picture? And so the exhibitor said, well, that is my great grandfather. And so here they were, they were gotten connected and they really found out later that they are cousins. And the, both of them live here in Brunswick County and never found out that but they, they didn't, were But they didn't know one another until that day. Yes, yes, and so I was, it was such a wonderful story that I, I I was so pleased about that. Well, and this is one way, uh, this is why we, we're trying to connect all of us together. We're, we're connecting both literally and symbolically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know you want to mention some of your corporate sponsors as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yes, I would like to mention our corporate sponsors. Uh, one, one friend of ours from Pittsburgh who had, I just, mentioned that we had this intercultural festival and he said I can help you and so that was such a great relief for me because one of the things that we are all all of us are trying to do is try to make both ends meet and for this we are only just trying to get something that would cover our ex our expenses so this was a great gift to us, uh, Tony Kaiser and UBS. Uh, uh, the Brunswick Electric has given us a little bit of grant. Uh, the National North Carolina Arts Council is helping us, mm -hmm. uh, uh, particularly with the art, with the entertainment part of the festival. And Brunswick Arts Council 
and Brunswick Electric. And I'm sure there are others. And but, I'm but sure there's others that, that so many that contribute. So, so many, and this is all the community is really supporting us in, in such a worthwhile Absolutely. endeavor. Uh, I want to point out to our viewers that it's a one-day festival, but you and others uh, spend the re better part of the year getting ready for the festival. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. After, after the, the festival, we're gearing up again to, to plan for the coming year. So this is a one-day festival, but it takes a whole year to plan it. Yeah. Our viewers will be interested in knowing that you, Mary Lou, were the recipient of the North Carolina Governor's Award for Volunteer Service, and uh, so this gets this gives me a chance to uh, publicly thank you for, for for all the work that involves in receiving that award. Well, thank you very much. It's very humbling, and it it's such an honor to be awarded this honor, and I it's 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 a very humbling. Thing. It's an it's honor a, well deserved me. and uh, Mary Lou Wong Chong I want to thank you for being with us today but let us not conclude before saying one more time it's September 7th mm -hmm. and the hours are 10 to 4 Saturday at the Brunswick County Brunswick Community College Com Brunswick Community College and in front of the Odell Auditorium right in front of the Odell Williamson Auditorium, Auditorium. Please be there. We are looking for you. Come and enjoy and have a journey because the world is coming to Brunswick County. Thank you again. Thank you for joining us this month on Our Hometown. It's our hope that you've enjoyed learning about Brunswick County Parks and Rec and the Brunswick County Intercultural Festival. If you'd like more information about what you've seen on today's show, or if you have a story that you'd like to share on a future show, please visit us at atmctv.com to tell us about it. Thanks again for joining us, and tune in next month as we explore more of Our Hometown. Is 6.30 too early for a get fit workout? Are your weeknights too hectic to catch West Brunswick football? Find yourself missing all your favorite ATMC TV shows? Well now you don't have to. ATMC TV is airing all their latest shows on demand. Stop, pause, fast forward, or rewind. Watch your shows on your time. Tune to Channel 1 to see shows like Get Fit, Tea Time, Community Spotlight, and more. Stay connected to beautiful Brunswick County with ATMC TV On Demand. Brought to you free by ATMC. My green daddy is the best green daddy ever. Where does he work? AMC Wireless.